Hey cats, Ed Bud here and welcome back to the channel. I think in life it's easy to regret some decisions that we make. Our choices can really shape our futures for many years to come. But no decisions are as important as running shoe purchases. A great shoe can spur you on to run faster and over a longer distance, whereas a running shoe purchased in error or haste, or perhaps due to some ridiculous peer pressure, may lay unused in our running shoe arsenal for a long time. A bit like an unwanted guest. Imagine Bart's evil twin that lives in the attic. Every time we go into our shoe closet we see it and think, what was I thinking? It haunts you on every mile or kilometre. Today I have four such pairs from my running shoe rotation. Ones that I picked up over the course of the last year or so and kind of regret buying. Let's get into it. Let me know your running shoe regrets down in the comments, guys. You know, I like to see them. So the first shoe up today is the Reebok Run Fast 3. A nice low weight to this one, it's about 251 grams, so that's about 8.9 ounces, so in theory it's something that should work really well for me. I picked this one up back in December 2020, and it's not really had an awful lot of use at all. Same midsole and outsole combination as the Runfast 2, which I really enjoyed. A lighter upper was promised with the Runfast 3, but sadly it didn't deliver. That lighter upper redesign was not a good fit whatsoever. The laces that came with the shoe were very, very thin cheese wire cutters. The tongue's a very weird, thin affair that has padding all the way down the center, but then these flappy sections either side that you can't get straight and they just bunch up as you're running. Just really awful. Could have done with some gusseting there to bring those flap sections down around the foot. Really poor lockdown as well. I just couldn't seem to get the shoe to lock properly. Changed the laces up and that didn't really help that much. Midsole and outsole are still quality, but sadly the rest of it, they've really ruined several steps back here. I think I only got about 23 miles or around about 37 kilometers into the shoe. Let's hope they can get the V4 back on track. Certainly one I regret purchasing really. Not sure they had to fiddle around too much with the tongue. The tongue worked great on the V2. And the profile of the shoe at the back around the heel just seems to have been modified slightly. It seems too low almost. Feels like your foot's almost coming out of the shoe and you can't really lock it down that much. So yeah, it's a bit sad. I love the midsole and outsole, but upper, it's one of my regrets. Before we get into the next part of the video, guys, it really helps the channel out if you hit that subscribe button and also click the bell to be notified of when I roll those new videos out for you. And also, don't forget, if you're enjoying the video, to give this a thumbs up like. Danke schön. Could upset a few people this one, but the second shoe today is the A6 Meta Racer. A shoe that I've really tried to love, but it just doesn't seem to fit into any specific use case category for me. Certainly an odd fitting shoe as well. A lot of A6 shoes fit quite long on me, this one's quite a departure, I suppose, from that, and it fits quite snugly. Not that that's a problem, it kind of fits appropriately for a race-type shoe, but I wouldn't really want to run a race in it. I find that flight foam midsole material to be quite unforgiving. It's rather firm, I suppose. I think that's also compounded by that part plate that's in the forefoot midfoot section of the shoe. I mean, it feels good at pace. I can't deny that whatsoever. Anything above my half marathon target pace, it feels really good but it's not a shoe that ever left my legs feeling rather fresh after use and i've just got so many other more forgiving options to utilize in training and racing that it's just kind of been pushed to the side it's just been sat dormant really for long periods of time there's always another shoe that just feels like it has a bit of an edge over this one never really saw that many people utilizing it either i think with the introduction of those newer shoes from asics i think they've kind of superseded this one and it's just been pushed into the past. It does remind me a little bit of the Streak 7 actually from Nike in many ways, including the upper material certainly, and that heel counter section as well is very, very familiar. That Streak 7 is just vastly more usable though I think on a more regular basis than the Meta Racer. And I think the Streak 7 also toasts the Meta Racer in terms of outsole grip. The salmon-like system on the bottom here didn't really ever enthuse me in terms of the amount of traction it offered. Not a bad shoe, but just not one that's really ignited the running fires within me. Certainly one of the more expensive regrets of 2020. I kind of found it a little hard to lace the shoe with any success without any pain as well. There's not an awful lot of tongue padding there whatsoever, and that's always a bit of a put off to me with any running apparatus. Sorry, but no dice. Shoe three today is the weird looking and strangely designed fuel cell speed drift from New Balance. 
I mean, on paper, this one should be a winner. You got the fuel cell material in the midsole. You got P-backs plate as well there. Sadly, the overbuilt upper takes away many of the benefits that the fuel cell midsole on the plate offer underneath the foot. You got that oddly positioned and shaped pull tab here. What's going on there? The extra tongue length and massive amount of padding as well over the top of the foot. You got these very odd super springy laces as well that they've included. Very strange design decision. And also, lots of suede utilized on the upper as well. Certainly not the lightest of material. You can't forget the cork insole as well. The outsole is like a reverse really of that found on the underside of the RC Elite. But unfortunately it doesn't have the same grip or traction. A very strange shoe this one. A bit like a cross between the Fuel Cell TC and the RC Elite. I think at retail this shoe is about 180 earth credits, which is serious money. Fortunately, I picked it up quite heavily discounted at the time. I think it's only about 14 miles or about 22 and a half kilometers into it so far. I am gonna give them another bash this week though and see if I can get something out of them. Maybe I can unlock the secrets of the speed rift. I mean, weight wise, it was okay, about 290 grams, which is about 10.2 ounces. So it's certainly in the ballpark, but I think with all that extra upper, it might be a tad warm, especially considering we got a heat wave at the moment in the UK. So more shoe sorrow and regret here. Ed Bud tends to the floor to offer genuine repentance. Only the penitent runner may pass. So if there was one shoe I perhaps really regret picking up over the last 12 months, a pair that's very earth credit heavy and hasn't seen any use at all, it's got to be these Crimson and Jade Alpha Flies. I paid full whack for these back a long while ago now and they have yet to absorb a single mile in anger. Now that's partly due to the pandemic that's been going on. There haven't been many races to utilize it at and I just feel genuinely sad that it hasn't been used as of yet. I really enjoyed the Black and Vault version of the Alpha Fly I picked up early in 2020. Quickly got loads of miles into those and really enjoyed wearing the shoes for some faster paced efforts, but I just can't really see where I'd utilize these in the coming months. There's some races on, but they tend to be shorter range races. Perhaps if I was to do another marathon time trial, or a race. I'm not sure where that's going to happen though or when. I think if I was going to do another marathon time trial, I mean the last one I did was in October just by myself to see if I could actually complete the distance and I did quite easily. This would surely have to be a contender for that effort. Well either that or the next percent too I suppose but I mean that would at least give me some sort of focus and target for the shoe and get some miles into it. Just feel really bad for it. The Alpha Fly isn't really something you can use as an everyday option. I don't think it's a good idea. I think there's too much built into the shoe that's kind of assistive to use it on a daily basis. I mean, you've got the carbon plate, you've got a massive amount of foam here and of course those AirPods as well. I just think at the moment I'm enjoying running in stuff that doesn't have an awful lot underneath my foot. Last couple of days I've been running in the Street 7 and also in the Run Fast Pro from Reebok and I've got to say my heart rate's been that bit lower and the effort or at least perceived effort seems a little lower. Don't know if I'm onto something there, maybe. This isn't a shoe that works for me at slower paces, I think it's one I'd need to put on and absolutely hammer it. So race or marathon only shoe for me. So to get some value out of this, as the temps cool down, I'm gonna do either a marathon or virtual marathon race or a time trial if I have to on my own. Average pace to beat for that would be seven minutes, 45 seconds per mile. Pretty sure I can do a bit better than that. That would bring me in under three hours 23, which is what I ran that time trial in back in October of last year. As I say, I ran that to see if I could do the distance and I could, it was, it was all right. Apart from maybe the last mile or so. The Alpha Fly really does deserve some use and should have an outing that's performed in anger. It's got to be at that marathon distance as well. I think that's what this shoe was ultimately designed for. Watch this space so that the Alpha Fly can show what it can do at some point when attached to my feet. Okay guys, so what are your running shoe regrets? These are four that I guess I kind of regret picking up. Some of them quite expensive regrets as well. Although it's all a learning process, you know, you grab a certain shoe, it works really well. You grab the next iteration of it and that's not so much the case. I think I might be able to get something out of the Alpha Fly, but the others, I'm not really that keen. Let me know your running shoe regrets down in the comments, guys. You know I like to see a musical interlude for you. I was really pleased to see that the band The War on Drugs 
they've put out a new track on YouTube. Comes complete with a video too. The track's called Living Proof. There's some really beautiful acoustic textures in there. And for once, the lead singer's vocals are much higher in the mix. Really easy to hear all of the lyrics, which are always really interesting. There's a kind of Bob Dylan-y, Nick Drake-y sort of vibe about the lyrics. And the delivery, I suppose. There's some really nice production here, really open sort of sound. There's a bit of sort of tape hiss and noise in there. And I really like to hear stuff like that. It sounds like it's been recorded with some subtlety and some honesty. There's a genuine feel about it. So if this is anything to go by from the rest of the album, we've got a real corker on our hands. I'm not entirely sure when it's released, but I shall be picking up a copy, that is for sure. Go and check it out, the new track from The War on Drugs. It's called Living Proof. I'm gonna go and leap into the ice bath once again, guys. It's pretty toasty here. Like seven mile effort earlier, I did some threshold work in there, about 25 minutes worth at a sort of threshold or harder pace, and it was, it was hard work. That's all I'm gonna say. I was banished to the shower as soon as I got in. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and sticking with me to the very end of the video. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I roll them out for you. And it really helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you if I haven't melted.